So I remember that in buying the Richardson K scene paints that I had not swatched them. I think I promised to swatch them. I did open them up and mess with them a little bit. A couple of things I want to mention about these paints. Right off the bat, um, and I don't know, these things are so sloppily put together. I hate to be hateful like this, but I mean, it looks like something I did in my garage or something. Like these labels, I mean, what is this? It's horrible. And I don't know if I got a bad batch, but my biggest criticism about these paints thus far, and I have not used them out the field, so I will just put that disclaimer out there, but these are probably the most smelly paints I've ever smelled in my life. They are, they smell so horrible and so toxic. I would definitely never use them in side somewhere in my studio or anywhere inside not without some sort of a good ventilation sy system at all um, if you buy these and you love these i would say maybe use them outside and i have not done any research on these paints i don't know what their toxicity levels are but i can say that that smell won me over very quickly <laughs> I'm gonna use a really cheap brush in this quick swatch that I'm doing because there's only a, a small, and, and granted, a limited palette's not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually can be a great thing. Some major artists used to paint using limited palettes and um, I think it could be great. It certainly can be a, a budget thing to do. You just have to get good at mixing your colors. So. With that said, right now I'm just going to um, put a little bit out because I definitely don't want this smelling. Let's see if I can find a. I definitely don't want this smelling up my whole studio, so I'm just going to put a little bit out at a time. See if I can use some water to cut it a bit. Because I think, let me see, that, is, that smells so industrial. Cars are left and right today. This great, this paper, this paper that I'm using here is not really the, um, it's not the cleanest piece, but it's just for reference. It has the weirdest smell. I don't know what this smell is, but it does not make me happy. <laughs> I mean, and I've been around, I've painted, I've painted with lots of oil paints and I've used all kinds of cleansing solvents and stuff and this is a completely unique smell to me that I can't say I'm excited about. the yellow. I mean, it's a pretty yellow, don't get me wrong. And then we'll use the road rose red. I will say even the labels themselves, like, like if you're going to have colors too, because I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I'm not an expert on these paints, but they're not, they're not so pure that they'd be great for mixing typically. Like this more looks more like a I don't know, kind of like, I don't know if it's a magenta, it's, oof, that one smells really horrible. If you are sensitive to smells, I would say this is a 
hard pass. It just has a really weird smell. I mean, like I said, maybe it's a bad batch. Let's hope that's what it is. If you've had these paints before and um, you've had a different experience, let me know. So this is the Ultramarine Deep. Seems like the more I put this out, the more it smells. I have such a small mixing tray because I, I was hesitant to commit after my first little experiment that I did. And let's see. Mm, I probably need I guess I'll use this. This one is not super clean, but it's fine. Use a bit of this green. This is called Shiva Green. Or Phalo Green, I guess is another color it says. Um, I was just looking to see what it says on here. I think this is made in the United States, but let's see here. So and technically like these are the main colors. These are the primary colors, but again, it's, this is not, these are not primary colors you would normally mix with. So you'd have to play with them even to get, I think a good primary color. But let's see. All right, I'm just going to mix a few things just to see what I get. There's a variation on a green. It's not a bad looking green, to be honest. And of course, I'm watering down. I don't even know if I'm using this right. It should be similar to gouache in the experience. Let's see, let's do a little bit of this. Okay, here's our orange. Mixing that rose red with the Naples yellow that I first put down. Not a bad looking orange. This is um, because of the smell. I certainly would not want this, a bunch of this paint put out on a, a palette without adequate ventilation. So if you try, if you have these and you try to um, utilize them in the uh, in the um, inside your 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 room or your studio or whatever, just be cautious. That's that's my only thoughts. So so here's the phalo green. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this yellow over here. Okay, and there there is my primary right there. There's that's the primary. So you mix a little bit of that Naples yellow with the phalo Shiba green. And that's definitely my primary green right there. So you can probably still get a lot of good variations on the colors that you would need. You just might have to take the time of mixing them. Um, but I don't know how this would work in the field. Cause I, I typically, when I go out, I'm in the field, unless I'm taking my full on oil painting box, 
I'm just usually painting with watercolors and um, with gouache. Um, not acrylic gouache, but regular gouache that you can reconstitute and uh, use water to reactivate it so that it'll flow again. And I might take a little bit of acrylic gouache if for something like, I don't know, like a white or something so that you can just make something pop if you need to. Um, but I just don't put a lot out because the acrylic gouache dries up and then once it's set, it does not move. You cannot reactivate it with water. So with that said, what else do I want to try here? Let me see. I could, I don't have much of this red left here. It looks like I get a nice purple with that. I was being so cautious in my mixing that I was like, oh, I just didn't want to put, I didn't want to get a big, a big um, little mixing thing out for it because of, oops, because of the issues that I knew that it had. So that kind of made a deeper, more, deeper ultramarine. And then with a little extra red, it would, finally become more purple. So I'll do that right here. Being super cautious. I'm already having, I don't know if I'm having allergies or let's see, what was I doing? The, the red and the ultramarine deep or what it is, but I came home and my nose started running like crazy and my throat started hurting and I do not normally have allergies. Oops. I don't normally have allergies so I hope to goodness it's not a cold because I'm planning on doing some stuff this weekend. So let's see here. Let's see how pretty of a purple I can get. Let's Oh, look at that. That's actually kind of pretty. Let's see, where should I put it? I kind of think I want to put it right here. That turned out really nice. It's a very deep purple. And of course you could do variations on that. I have also white and ivory black in my little collection. So already that's quite a nice little variety that I'm getting from that without going too far. Anything else I can do with this little collection? So it doesn't come with a brown. You'd have to mix a brown or you'd have to mix a, um, a pink if you wanted a pink. That's what I should have done right there. All right. So I'm going to get a slightly bigger little tray here for color mixing and let's see so often I don't know how much you play with mixing paints but when you start mixing all the primaries together or all like all the colors really that's when things start becoming brown or or black depending on what you have I'm just mixing everything just to see what my result would be in each part. So I got a, a, a deeper, more greenish blue by just mixing that together. Which that was the, the yellow and the phalo and no, the, yeah, the phalo and let's see, what was it? The rose red, the ultramarine, a little bit of phalo. Yeah, that's what it was. All right. So I'm also going to pop in a little bit of my black. Oof. Ooh, stinky stink. Icky. Let's see what we can do here. Let's 
Let's see, if I wanted brown, I usually have at least like a raw sienna and that sort of thing, so I never really have to go this far into my primaries. to try to make browns and blacks. So, let's see. This is kind of just like really ex a science experiment here. All right, there's a little bit of a brown. By neutralizing that red, adding a little bit of yellow, I got kind of a brownish color. Kind of a medium brown, I think. Um, a really a raw sienna-ish brown. And I'm not going to go into this too far. I'm just trying to prove that I got a little bit of a range here. But again, using these paints, I you know I don't know if I want to try to do this color mixing out in the woods, and I don't want to use it in here, so. It's going to have to woo me, really. <laughs> I'm going to have to, it's going to have to take me on a few dates before I'm sold. And um, like I said, I don't even know if it's worth giving it the chance. And so I have a black, so I don't need to make a black at least. Because um, sometimes that's what people tell you is not to use black. But it does have a black, which that allowed me to make this um, specific um, form of brown here. And if you wanted it warmer, you could add a little bit more red. Or if you wanted it colder, you could make add a little bit more blue to it. So, that was more than I was planning on doing, so I might have to add a little black to it, so we'll see. Now it's too far into the, the blue range. So, I don't know if I have you in the best spot, to be honest. Let me move you forward a little bit. Okay, let me see here. There. Maybe that'll help. So now it's gone back to a bit of a bluish, um, what would you call that? I want to think of like a navy, not a navy blue, but a um, a blue that I've seen the military use. Is that what that is? What, what is this? Mm -hmm. It actually looks kind of gray, but it's a greenish gray for sure on the page itself but now it's not this is the problem with doing such a limited palette without being really familiar like with my watercolor set because of having the raw sienna and burnt siennas I already know where I need to go. Um, I usually don't have much problem. Either I already have a warm brown or a cooler brown um, or a warm black or a cold black. I already know where I'm at. Um, so, um, what do I want to do with this? This is why um, color swatching helps you learn your materials really well. And mixing paints. Oh look, I just got a plum. Oh, that's kind of pretty, a pretty plum color. Like actually it's the kind of plum like I would paint a fruit with that piece of fruit, plum, it's 
berry or an eggplant, that would be perfect. And let's see what else we can do with this little witch's brew I've got going on right now. I think we're going to go back towards the browns now that I put that yellow in, but it's, oh, it's kind of um, a rosy color. Like a red brown, maybe. That's interesting. Kind of like um, brick. That's the color I would say that this is. It's like a brick color. And what you could do is like once you um, once you like certain colors and you have a little. Um, sheet like this. If you need to go back using a particular brand like this, you can always use your paints and mix up little swatch cards and place them right next to it to match. And then sometimes what I'll do, I actually sometimes will keep longer sheets of paper like this length around and I'll just keep swatching all along the edge and keep trying to match it, match it, match it until you get it, um, if you're gonna use it for a larger painting. All right, so I did that. And then, let's see, I'm actually going to add in a little bit of this white here. Actually, did I add any of the green in here? I wonder, let me do green. I'm gonna add a little bit of this phthalo to this. All right, that's enough of that. All righty. Now what will we get? What do you think? Got all these reds in here. Reds and blues and yellows. What are we gonna get now? What are we gonna get? Okay, I put, I put so much of that color in there that it's, oh, it's, not, it's nice. It's kind of like, what is this? It's like, like a blue green. Blue green. And of course, the, once you figure out what you like and what you can do, um, then you could start figuring out, like when you're doing mixing, what plus what plus what equals approximately what you're going here for. So like some of these we would know. These are the primaries. This is the Naples yellow, the, what was this again? Rose red, the ultramarine blue, the Shiva green. The other two is just, um, ivory black and titanium white and then once you're trying to go for these you can say oh this is a little bit of the naples yellow plus the um rose red that's how you got that um this was a little bit of the ultramarine deep with a little bit of the um let's see what was it hmm. what was that was a little bit of the black. Now I can't remember. But on your little cards, once you figure it out and you figure out what you like, then you can start actually mapping out, like and telling yourself little little instructions, little um, maybe not as in depth as they like when you're baking a cake, a cup, or whatever. It's actually would just be this plus this plus this, and then you'll have to figure out the ratios when you're trying to mix on the fly in a situation like this. So, but then we could go really, really far into this where you're actually mixing in, um, you know, your whites and your blacks to, um, to all these various colors. It could go on quite a while playing with these, but I just wanted to have a, a swatch sheet and certainly I promised 
See, here's more of a sage color once I added in that white. I don't want to, and there's variations of it depending on how much you put in. How much of any color you put in creates all sorts of variations, and that's a really lovely sage green right there. So if you don't mind stinky paints, you know, and you're ready to try this particular product, it's an option. I think there's some beautiful variations there. And uh, you could go on quite a bit playing with all the varieties that you could get. Um, and you get quite a bit of paint. I will say that for the set, that's a pretty huge tube and it'll probably take you a while to go through it. So that said, that's that particular swatching for um, the Richardson Casein series.